the first week I was working at Luxo, I read a comment on Twitter, someone in the community that said, why are you focusing on um, the fashion industry when Luxo could be so much bigger? It could be so much broader. When I read that tweet, I was like, you are so right. And the more I started to learn about about the blockchain, about the, the network, the, the, the standards, you know, the, like all the different layers of our tech and all the different sort of offerings and really started to think about what we could be, the more I realized like we, we gotta go bigger, we gotta go broader. We have with us today, Natalie, marketing lead at the Foundation for the New Creative Economies, aka Fancy. Natalie, how are we doing today? Excellent. How are you doing, Sage? I am doing fantastic. So, Natalie, can you give us a bit on your background? Uh, where have you worked in the past? What interests you? How do you find yourself in this role at the uh, Foundation for the New Creative Economies? Sure thing. So, well... I've been around for a while, have many twists and turns in my career. The first 10 years of my career, I worked in the performing arts in New York City and internationally. And then in about 2006, um, YouTube was coming out. I was in grad school studying digital media. And then in 2007, I was South by, there's Twitter launch. Like there was just this whole sort of like new digital uh digital reality uh, coming out at that time. And I really wanted to be a part of it. And uh, so I started a, working in um, really in social media by, by way of advocacy work. So at the United Nations and with some nonprofits. And that's really where social media started. But about 2008, 2009, brands started to realize that this thing was taking off, this thing called Facebook. And it was like still my space. It was like, Way back when, but brands were like, uh, I think we need to get in on this because this seems to be a thing that's happening now. And um, and they were looking to agencies really to help them figure out, like, how do we do this? Because now we have to talk directly to our customers. We have to be real. We have to have a voice that isn't so corporate, that works on, um, on these social media platforms where everyone can talk back to us. Uh, and so I uh, became a consultant at different agencies and I was helping agencies start um, their social media departments, really. So like setting up departments, setting up the offerings. What does that look like from a commercial perspective? And also got, uh, I started in community management, really. But I very quickly got pulled into strategy and kind of had to learn it quickly and figure it out. But there just weren't that many people doing it at the time. So I started creating social media playbooks. For really big brands like Unilever Brands, um, Fox Entertainment. I worked for like VaynerMedia very early days, uh, some uh, some uh, PR agencies and as well as some digitas, uh, digital agencies. And did that for a few years before I went directly in-house at an agency called MRY where I started their community strategy uh, de department. It really became the social media department. And we did like all the social media for big brands like Visa, Johnson & Johnson brands, like a few different banks. Also got into financial uh, financial industry a little bit that way. Um, yeah, and these were the days where uh, brands were looking to create community, but they didn't know what that meant or how to define that. And they knew that they needed to um, engage with their audiences, define their audiences, but really start thinking about their audiences as how do we convert an audience into a community. And it was really a, it was an exciting time, but also a little bit of a frustrating time because it was, it was like always at this angle of like it being a marketing tactic and how can we get, you know, how can we get more return on our investment by creating communities? I mean, that's how corporations have to think about the marketing. So it was always a little bit of like um, a juxtaposition between wanting to be um, open and honest with customers and also wanting to leverage them. Like, you know, UGC mm -hmm. influencers were popping up at this time. I led also the influencer marketing department at an agency at MRY for a few years, figuring out how to work with influencers. We weren't paying them in the early days. It was just, you know, and then we started to have to figure out how to start paying them. So it was a whole bunch of like figuring things out as we went. And then at some point, like, what was this, like 2000, oh, 13, 14, I can't remember exactly the time, but it all started to become pay to play. The algorithm started to see major organic uh, drop in organic reach, organic growth. And it was becoming very clear that social media was now moving towards this pure advertising models and 
the the companies that the big companies needed to you know to, to turn a profit and um and then their their audience really became the monetization <laughs> method and it just all became advertising so i had to learn that as well so that was the time then i started we started fusing more with the paid media department social media and paid became uh, one really and we started figuring out how to uh, reach more people and what budgets would look like and this kind of thing, even while trying to maintain this authenticity and this brand building and this connection with customers. And but that side of uh, things is always where I, what I found more exciting. But then also just knowing the paid side, it's, it's just essential. It's an essential piece of marketing. So, yeah. So mm -hmm. and then, um, I mean, I worked in the agency side for many, many years. Also got to work on some cool startup projects. Uh, at some of these agencies, um, yeah, and that took me up until uh, like 2015. I had a baby. I moved to Europe. I started working out of the UK. I went on the commercial side of the social media agency, um, and yeah, and then Brexit happened, and I, that just like cut off my my uh, that job at the time. I was working out of the UK. I was living in Europe, and I was like, let me recalibrate and let's think about what's next. And here becomes the the angle where we start where we start to get into Web three, but uh, but that's kind of yeah that's kind of the overview. Very cool, yeah. So I mean, as, as we've chatted about before, that kind of recognition of um, those early days of social media and how they might look very similar to like what Web three is going through um, nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. You get the breakout of Twitter and the breakout of Facebook and breakout of MySpace and all of these kind of big um, new uh, technologies that are shifting the strategy, especially when it comes to, to things like marketing um, and you being yeah. able to, to lead those early strategies behind this groundbreaking tech, you said it reminds you a lot of kind of what's happening right now around blockchain. Would you maybe want to totally. highlight kind of how you stumbled into blockchain when you found your, your role here at Luxo? What, what enjoys you about the similarities of those two? So I remember very distinctly being at brunch in 2015, I just like, remember this day it happened. And my friends, very close friends of mine, were like, we're starting this new project. It's, um, it's blockchain technology. Um, it, we're building a project on Ethereum. And basically, we want to create um, a decentralized film distribution. So he was a film director. She was a producer. They worked in indie film and also in Hollywood. And they saw a lot of the pain points of the film industry. And they discovered Ethereum. And kind of became part of the community. This was in New York. And it just blew my mind what 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 this could be and what this meant. And they really broke it, it broke it down for me, like how it was gonna work and how blockchain technology was at the base layer, completely different than anything we'd ever known. Um, and then that was the moment where uh, I just started researching it. I was super intrigued, right? And then I followed their progress of this project over the years. I started reading um, some of the, the the leaders in the industry, like uh, Joe Lubin, uh, Vitalik, of course, and Vinay Gupta. I just started following these guys and listening to what they were saying. Um, but I didn't see a way in for me. I was like, "That's such a different world over there." I don't, I don't, I, I would love to work in that space, but I don't, I don't know how. But then in uh, 2020 and during COVID, I met these guys starting. Um, they were starting an, an AR VR agency here in Barcelona, and I became a, a founding partner in that um, that agency set up. And they were working in virtual worlds and metaverses and um, and with NFTs, and that really got me interested. And the, the NFT boom happened, and I was like, "Whoa, this is going to be big!" And I could already see this kind of like boom and bust. Uh, hype and speculation cycle was just kind of like a, a regular market cycle that was happening. But I knew that the NFT technology was really, really intriguing. And this was like a continuation of this theme of like what this could mean for artists and what this mm. could mean for distribution and, and creating new economies and just e equalizing the playing field for everyone. And uh, it just felt like something big was coming. And this company called Freeverse, which is um, NFT Mm -hmm. a dynamic NFT infrastructure platform. They were needing a head of marketing comms and brand and all that. And I was their first hire on that side of things. And I helped them figure out what the branding was and start the marketing, built a team. That was really cool. Like understand they're like they're very, very committed to, de to decentralization as well. And where the dynamic NFTs, like the the evolving properties are also uh, stored on chain. And it's, there's no piece of that, of their of the process that's, that's um, centralized. And this is when I got really, really interested uh, also in like the whole payment side and just kind of learned a whole bunch there. 
but um yeah, when I found out about this Luxo role, it was it seemed like I wanted to move to a layer one. Honestly, that was a layer two solution and kind of niche and also very, very B2B focused. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do something that was like potentially bigger and a little bit more systemic in terms of what the um the goal was for um for yeah, the blockchain itself. So when the Luxo role came out, three people in one week were like, Hey, this role sounds perfect for you. So I applied for it and, and here I am six months later. Uh, working at, yeah, working for the foundation for the new economies, but but working towards the growth of the Luxo uh, ecosystem. We're going to go into a little bit more of what you're doing at Luxo and kind of how you've been spending your time and, and what the future looks like. But uh, for now, you brought up branding at Freeverse, how you were helping them navigate this new strategy of, of forming a brand in this, in this emerging tech field. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from Marty Neumeier is, your brand is not what you say it is, it's what they say it is. Right. Can you spend some time talking about maybe the difference between branding and marketing and how they work together to make sure your brand is uh, what you say it is? So, well, first of all, that quote, I love it because it's it's like we marketing people and like those of us who are very passionate about a, a company, a product, a network we work for, whatever it is, um, we we want to say what we want to say about it. But but what we want to say about it is is irrelevant, really. It's what it's what the world needs to hear that we need to talk about, right? And it's, uh, so So branding is like, it can be a lot of things. Um, I'm very interested um, in talking today about the brand strategy level. I mean, people can, def you can define brand in many ways. You can define brand strategy in many ways. You can find branding in different ways. But let's think about brand strategy because that's really the foundation that everything sits on, right? Um, and, and so, the brand is really like brand strategy is really about this sort of like this long term plan that we have to outmaneuver the competition and to make to, to show ourselves as radically different from the rest. We have to stand out. And that's really what brand strategy is about. A brand DNA is like that that base level that everything else sits upon, which is your vision, mission, purpose, values. And then you've got to know your, you know, your targets. And and then when the brand is, is really it's really a promise, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's the perception people have. Let's, let's use Luxo now as an example. So the brand is a perception people have of Luxo, the relationship that people have with us. It's, it's a promise and it's the way we communicate that promise verbally and visually. And it's got to be emotional. It has mm -hmm. to appeal to people. We know this now from research, right? Uh, it has to appeal to people on an emotional level. And so you got to kind of dig down and find underneath all of those layers, what what are we doing to move people? What are we doing to solve people's problems? And it really needs to be, and this kind of starts to move us into marketing. Like what are the problems? What are, what are the problems we're solving? And what are the benefits that we can promise? And again, a brand being a promise. Brand is also um, discipline. So it needs to be decided upon. It's a decision, right? It's a focus. Like um, I worked for the, one of the, brand strategy doers of the world, um, Eric Yochumstaller in New York. And he was like, you've got to focus. Like, it was just like always like, you have to cut out some things to focus on exactly what your brand is. You can't be everything. It's narrow in, right? And so, um, and so I think it's really so exciting when, when we can nail down what a brand is, what the promise is, and it, it's got to be razor tight. It's got to be, it's got to be sharp and on point and clear clear to everybody right and so it's hard i don't want to make it sound like all of that like cutting out everything else to get to that is is the tricky part and that's what we spent some a fair amount of time on lately and hooked up um and then marketing is also very exciting marketing is all the activities we do really right and so but you can't really do marketing in the right way until you know what the brand is and like Otherwise, you're wasting your time. You're confusing people. You know, right? You know what I mean? So, like, mm -hmm. you need to take that brand and then market the brand. Um, the other thing I would say about marketing is that um, it's functional, right? Like, if, if branding mm -hmm. is brand is, is emotional, marketing is very functional and it's very tactical. Also, it needs to be strategic. Like, what are we trying to achieve and how are we going to achieve it? That's the strategy. You've got to get into the tactics. Marketing is so many things, it's rich, right? It's also like, measurement it's numbers it's it's all this performance marketing is essential uh we have to measure and optimize um and it's uh it, a lot of it can be automated automated these days whereas brand 
I don't I don't know how AI is gonna 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 like help us. AI and automation is not I don't know like it's gonna be interesting if that can help us on the brand level eventually. But but this is like where it really takes specific expertise um, to nail down that brand. I think well marketing needs to be really functional and really um, constant. It's it's, it's activity driven, right? This right. is my this is how I see the difference of the two. Right, I think. Um... Yeah, just me thinking about maybe a potential example, like a potential example of someone who does that great is like Nike, right? They have this fantastic mm. branding attached to them of the just do it, right? It's a slogan. It's their entire branding of their entire company, right? And they go through the effort of making a commercial where they're not telling you about their flyknit technology or this new kind of phone that they got exactly. in their shoes. They're selling you on this idea of their brand being for the athletes and for this bigger picture just doing it right and that's the branding that they've spent so long pushing and what really makes their company special yeah. and then the marketing activity is actually getting the commercial out there right or, or placing that kind exactly. of uh, form of, of brand spreading at the the olympic event right or, or wherever they may choose to go now if we transition a little bit i know you mentioned um again like talking about this topic of branding and um, your boss that you worked uh, with prior talking about focus, 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 right? Being able to um, strip away all the other stuff, all the excess, and really be able to dial in on one specific area. Now, branding and, and marketing in that sense of, of really getting a focused mission can be especially hard for something like Luxo, where you have both uh, a technical side that you need to appease to, as well as a non-technical side, right? We call ourselves a social chain, right? Uh, you have social mm -hmm. of the people that are interacting on the non-technical level, yet you need the technicals to be able to build the apps that they might be meeting each other on, right? Uh, when it comes to target audience uh, and being able to kind of reach both of these sides, uh, who are you guys trying to reach towards and, and how are you potentially balancing um, this kind of, mm -hmm. I don't want to call it an issue, but um, this, this topic? Yeah, it's a good question. So, you know, we... We have been going through a shift in terms of who we're appealing to, which industries we're, we're appealing to, and where we're playing, and really what Luxo is, and making that you know really clear um, is is has been the goal. Like that's really what we've been working towards um, over the last few months. Um, so we do have these different audiences. I mean, even if you look at there's a technical audience and there's a non-technical audience. I think more and more I'm realizing that everybody wants us to be able to explain Luxo in clear terms and um, and really with, in a succinct way. And so we're kind of separating it out um, in terms of like, what is our top line message? And that top line message needs to appeal to everyone. It needs to appeal to the most technical developer who's looking for the chain to develop the next project on and comes across one or two lines that explains what Luxo is and explains our value proposition and gets it and feels like this is right for me or this isn't right for me. It also needs to be able to appeal to this two point, this web 2.5 audience that we, we is imperative to start speaking to and start bringing them in. We, right. We need to break out of the web three bubble and start bringing in the curious, the newcomers. And so it's got to appeal to those people as well. So it needs to not be too technical and it needs to be based on this like problem benefit, uh, you know, value proposition angle. So we've been working on that hard and that's been hard to get to. We're getting there. Um, and what we really decided is this top light, we have so, like, we've got like four or five major um, issues that we're solving, but, um, but this idea of like this fragmented online experience that we all have in web three or even in web two, um, this is what we're solving for. And we're really making this unified experience. If you think of the universal profiles and like the ubiquity of universal profiles could mean a much more streamlined, easy to use, interoperable experience for everyone across all the, you know, all the, all the dApps that will be out there across all the ecosystems. So, um, so we're really focusing, we've been really heavily focusing on what is that top line message. And then meanwhile, all of the technical stuff has to continue because we need developers to be building dApps and we need to grow this ecosystem with the developers as well, right? And we have like the DevRel team really working hard on docs. Um, in the website that we're planning now, which will launch in August, <laughs> um, excited about that. we um, will 
we're we're helping we're helping kind of navigate the journey for any user. So providing the top line solution and then and then really funneling like developers over to here's here's where you can learn more. Or if you're a builder, a creator, here's where you can learn more, like you know, kind of like funneling people based on on the target segment. Doing our best to do that. But still keeping simplicity when we don't want to over complicate the website, right? And and so this more technical audience, and um, we're really relying on events and key events, you know, showing up there, including our making sure our tech team is there to speak the technical speak that we have. And we also have this sort of um, uh, like this ERC seven twenty five account on Twitter, which and um, like LSP Labs being planned. And so this more technical work should be or this more technical update and um, and conversations would ideally be happening over on those properties while we keep uh, those like uh, profiles. While Luxo itself needs to be more focused on the vision, the bigger picture stuff. And I mean, honestly, we're really looking to the, to the entire ecosystem to help us spread the word. I mean, one truism from marketing since marketing has, has existed is word of mouth. Like there is no more effective means of marketing than word of, word of mouth. And a, and a brand can talk about itself and all the great things about it all day, but only when someone else talks about that brand, uh, is, it, is it really believable? When you hear from your friends that Luxo is this really cool thing they need to know about, you know, um, maybe you see it in digital ad, maybe you see it on Twitter, maybe it comes, you see it at a conference, but when you also hear it from somebody you trust, bring that super important, right? So it's kind of a combination of um, I'm going off in like in all different directions here, but in terms of like hitting on both those audiences, it's something that we're really trying to to nail down and make sure that we're doing effectively as we move forward into this uh, this kind of soft launch of the rebrand. Yeah, it seems like you guys are, are focusing heavily on like the marketing funnel, right? Have the have the scope at the top as wide as you can and try to attract as many yes. people and then funnel them into the areas that they need to go. Um, exactly. which I, I think is a great idea and, uh, excited to hear about those timelines. Can't wait to see those, uh, those new development come out. Uh, and and yeah. we've been doing a lot of talking about kind of what you've been doing at Luxo now, but would you like to, um, spend some more time? I know you've been around Luxo for about six months now. Um, mm -hmm. what have you guys been, been spending most of your time on? I have been very much leading this brand, this rebrand process and this like excavation, if you will, uh, with a cross-functional team. It's like a working group that we have. And um, yeah, I mean, just like rereading the white paper, really breaking that down, examining that and going, where has Luxo been and where is it going? And um, I want to like just kind of mention when I first, I think the first week I was working at Luxo, I read a comment on Twitter, someone in the community that said, why are you focusing on um, the fashion industry when Luxo could be so much bigger? It could be so much broader. And my first response was like, oh my God, that's a nightmare for a marketer because the more you can niche down, the more you can be sure to reach that audience, right? And with the right message. But I, I mean, that when I read that tweet, I was like, you are so right. And the more I started to learn about about the blockchain, about the, the network, the, the, the standards, you know, the, like all the different layers of our tech and all the different sort of offerings and really started to think about what we could be, the more I realized like we, we got to go bigger, we got to go broader. And this is kind of where, I mean, I don't want to take all the credit for it. It definitely happened in a group, but this is where this like social angle popped up because we like, we really are um, bringing the kind of human element um, to blockchain. I mean, Universal Profiles brings your identity, whether it's you or, you know, um, your, your identifiable you, um, could be an, an, an anonymous still, but it is a, 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 an, you know, an, an identifiable version of you, um, on chain and all of the, all of the metadata that you could want there, all of the information and everything stored in one place. It's so easy to use. Like, it was just like, this could be really, really big. So we have been like letting go of some of what was in order to build what is, and this is a process as it really takes some time. Um, alongside that, like just a whole bunch of uh, stuff in terms of like formalizing teams, structures, creating more, creating more structure really. And especially this happened when we moved to the foundation. This is a Swiss foundation with compliance. We have to follow um, some legalities and we have to do things. We want to do things in the right way, right? And, um, and so that's just really kind of been formalizing these and like formalizing a budget, like just getting really everything 
um, more structured, I would say. And not that there was a structure there before, just kind of tightening that ship. And um, yeah, and like the the website itself, this has been a major project. Uh, we have a really great agency we're working with, immersive agency. We'll plug them at some point, They've been amazing partners. Um, and I'm just looking for all kinds of like, you know, I need some consultants and some partners. Like if there's anyone watching this that's amazing um, at like YouTube optimization, kind of need some consultants to dip in um, about just a uh, higher performance tracking analytic um, partner just to do a little bit of setup work, right? And then we can take it over. But um, just getting all of this stuff really set up so that as we start to do more digital marketing efforts, we can measure everything and put our money, well, you know, put put the money and time resources where it makes the most sense. We're getting the most return. There's also been KO, a bunch of KOL work, the grants work. I mean, there's so much going on. Mm-hmm. Nowhere to start. The grants program itself has been really, really fun, really exciting. Um, there's going to be a lot more of that. Like the first wave was us dipping our toe in. Um, the growth team is an amazing job, but we're going to start, that's going to start to kind of like snowball, right? Fantastic answer. I have so many thoughts on that. I think um, as much as I do really enjoy um, finding a niche, right? Like we, you notice that with keys is we are hyper-focused on on yeah. several niches down. We are blockchain focused, we are Luxo focused, we are media focused, right? Uh, but I do yeah. acknowledge just what you're saying of like, as much as it can uh, be great to really serve that audience. If you can crack into your niche and, and really be able to serve them, then you have this unique opportunity. But at the same time, uh, you're just immediately kind of like segregating yourself from all of that other potential, right? And with Luxo yeah. being just, in reality, a general purpose EVM, right? They're just just another another Ethereum. There's so much more than just a fashion blockchain. Um, and it, it's fantastic to see you guys moving away from that. Uh, It's fantastic to see kind of this, like, again, like branding change, this whole like kind of shift in narrative, which just as we discussed Mm. before, as much as branding isn't what you say it is, you can work to to make the statement, make it known that this we are not this, we are this. Right. And that is a a hard shift. But um, again, as I I go to a lot of conferences and a lot of in-person events for for Keys and for Lucto, I have firsthand started to notice the shift when I was in London, uh, I was in, in line at a restaurant with Jean, uh, the the uh, smart contract lead at Luxo, and we had someone approach us. I was wearing this hat. She approached right. us and said, oh, Luxo, that's that social blockchain, right? Amazing. And I was like, I was like oh, man, you are, you are the first person who approached me about Luxo and not call it a fashion blockchain, right? So now this is, okay. that is exactly what you're talking about is word to mouth of branding is changing. The narratives are starting to change, but it, it doesn't change overnight. Um, so it, it's great to hear that you guys are kind of moving in that direction and, and rethinking yeah. these things. Um, now, another thing that you mentioned as well is that you, um, kind of work, um, what was the, what was the phrase that you said of like across teams? How did you, for, how did you call that? Yeah. Cross-functional or yeah. Cross-functional. Kind of, like, it's kind yeah. of like the, yeah. Okay. Cross-functional team. Yeah, yeah, like I work with Zun, you know, like we, we all we all kind of we have a really truly decentralized approach to work. It's like I'm, I'm so used to coming from kind of corporate world where it's like stay in your swim lane, like don't get out of your lane, you know. And and we really cross over. We really we really help each other and work together. And it's 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 super cool because I mean, especially with marketing, good ideas come from everywhere. I mean, you need decision makers at the end of the day, and this is why we have leads and departments. Uh, to keep things moving, right? Otherwise, if it's like, if it's just like, yeah, okay, everyone's idea count, you know, you, you gotta make a decision at the to move, you know. But I just love like really getting, yeah, this input from from everywhere. I think it's so cool. We have a very engaged team. I think it's fantastic. Um, and uh, again, we love we love the group think as long as it's again efficient, right? As long as we can come to decisions and, yeah. and be able to continue moving forward. Um, which brings me to my next question of like you prioritize all this cross-functionality, right? And and Luxo is a decentralized blockchain. And this is, again, my my biggest gripe when people are like, when Luxo marketing? And I'm like, Luxo marketing is here. Mm-hmm. We can expect there to be a small little group within Luxo that does all right. of the marketing for a brand that's not decentralized, right? You need keys, you need Gencinity, you need all the people on Twitter, and then you need uh, yourself and, and the tech team to kind of do their roles at, at Fancy and and um, kind of in that tech group as well. Um, so would you yeah. maybe want to talk about 
how the decentralization might look or how you guys are, are thinking about that um, over, at, over at Fancy? I think it's really important, like uh, like all of this this language I've been writing, this kind of top line, like taglines and all this stuff, like we really, we never say we, it's a very big shift from the corporate mind of we are this and, you know, um, like there's a little bit, we have to detach a little bit and we have to let the network be co-owned by everyone who takes, who plays a role in it. Like token holders, validators, community members, uh, all the stakeholders, uh, like everyone who who works for Fancy, but but it's like there's a, there's a much more level playing field here, right? So I always have to, whenever I'm writing out what Luxo is, I have to think about Luxo is not we are, Luxo is and then not, Luxo is a network, right? And um, and well, well, it needs it needs to have people like me and like those like John like like you know Hugo and Fabian, all the people who make up Luxo, um, the, you know the team that's working on growing the ecosystem. Uh, we we really need keys, Dow. We really need the community. We need everyone that um, has a stake in in the game to 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 kind of take part and to keep feeding us ideas and keep staying involved and also trust that we're taking all that and doing what we can um, to keep this growth happening and to make this growth happen and 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 make the vision fulfill the vision over the long term. Because I'm also having to think long term, right? Um, and so, uh, we don't really think about there being like a Luxo team. In fact, internally, uh, we all have our individual roles to play. We cross over a lot. And we also like, I'm, I've been studying Buddhist philosophy for 25 years. And for me, it's like, it's actually being able to practice this, this concept of detachment. And I don't, I don't mean I'm very attached to every day I go to work. I'm very attached to like my production. Right. And I want to produce work, I want to get stuff done, but I, I ha we have to detach a little bit in terms of like what this is going to look like, what it's going to be. And we need everyone to be a part of building this ecosystem. It's not really up to us. And so when Fabian, Fabian's also often asked, like, what, are, what is a use case that you imagine? And it's, it's so infinite that, you know, it's almost like I want to be, get, I want to be producing some use cases and I, we're going to be doing that with some of the grants work, I hope, or plan. Um, but at the same time, like, as soon as you give a use case, it also feels a little bit limiting. We need to do that to give developers and builders an idea of what it could be, so then it could help them understand the tech. But at the same time, it just feels really infinite in a beautiful way, like what could be um, in terms of uses of, of this technology. So, and we are just really big on decentralization. Like honestly, when we're writing, we're like still putting the final touches on on, on our vision, mission, values, and all that. So we haven't shared them publicly yet. We will eventually. Um, but so we just keep coming back to decentralization and what that can mean for societies at large, uh, not just for, for us in our small little bubble over here, but for the, for the world really. Yeah. So it gets pretty deep to be honest. And a lot of questions come up. We need to question this stuff. Like what does real decentralization uh, look like? You know, it can feel a little wild with sometimes. So, uh, this is where doubts come in and this is where, you know, we need to figure out the governance and all this stuff in, in the long term. But, uh. But this is really this is really big for us, and and we're not that interested in. I'm personally, I'm not interested in Web three if it's if it's not decentralized. I don't I don't understand this. This like it feels like wolf in in sheep's clothing. These decentral like these Web three platforms that are centralized with or these block blockchains that are centralized. You know, I just I'm not sure. For me, it's not the real deal. So if we're talking, uh, we're talking technical. We're talking non technical, right? Like these are pretty pretty standard kind of two groups that circulate blockchain but there's a lot of other niches right when you talk about regens or dgens or like any of these other kind of like more specific community member types uh are you making considerations with that when it comes to to marketing and this kind of shift that you guys are making absolutely yeah so we we have some we have our audiences sort of sorted out and we need to we need to talk to the dgens like that's we just we need them they're part of the they're part of the ecosystem as well and so this, a lot of this KOL work that we're doing now um, is focused on reaching them, getting them excited about Luxo. We are really in the long term and in, in like deep in our heart, we're really focused on this regen crowd as well. Uh, we're all reading the, uh, well, many uh, have already read the plurality book. I'm reading it now. 
uh, starting in on it. And um, like, this is where that big societal shift will come. And so in the long term, we really want to start just getting more into this, uh, this kind of region um, movement, really, if you will. Uh, we've done some work already with like Friends with Benefits, partnering with them and, and um, even like, you know, uh, like Refraction and, and Boys Club and those guys uh, were pretty good at like um, another kind of another crowd um, to reach there. We are also thinking about the C-Gen crowd, which is uh, maybe also in that in that group. But this is that we kind of coined this term C-Gen. This is like the culture, the culture and creator, um, it, those who blockchain appeals to them because they're interested in that side of things in the NFT world and um, the art world and really... Yeah, recreating the culture of the future through yeah, yeah, through blockchain technology. And so we want to also like make sure we kind of have a nice mix of appealing to these different groups. And um that does mean we need to be universally appealing and, and but this is where we're really we're going with this universality and this kind of unification thing. Um and then also we really need to appeal to normies. Like it's just we need like a big niggle of mine in the industry is like it just feels really exclusive sometimes. It feels like a hard club to enter. And when we talk about our brand associations, we want to do the opposite. We want to we want to feel people to feel included. We want to you know be helpful and on board. And um, and just like I was telling you, that moment that I had that brunch and when I learned about blockchain and like that moment, like we want we want to have we want people to have that moment through Luxo, you know. And that moment where they're like, okay, this could appeal to me. I could get involved. I, you know, so this is a lot of what you're going to start seeing also with our marketing, our brand and marketing messaging is this kind of like inclusiveness um, for the normies. Yeah. Or the curious, the Web3 curious, let's say. Yeah. When I think Luxo, I think improved user experience. I think like email logins. I think no gas fees. I think all of these things that make it easier for people to get involved. And then when I think about these yeah. various crowds, I think like DGENs, like, DGENs, if they're true DGENs, they're going to do what they need to do to be able to go make these bets that they want to go make, right? Yeah. They'll figure exactly. out how to use a MetaMask. They'll they'll do what they need to do, right? And then we talk regens, which is happens to be the area of blockchain that I spend most of my time in, um, mm. living on farms in Portugal and Puerto Rico and kind of all over. And Amazing. you get a lot of these people that would like really relate to a lot of the ethos of blockchain, but are now met with mm. this like... Um, kind of fence to jump over of like how do I go make a wallet to be able to go interact mm -hmm. with some of these some of these new systems right and that's where like Luxo right I, I see you see it very clearly uh, when you're talking normie crowd it's like the same thing there of like rather than go to a sex and make a, a Coinbase wallet because of email login right you can go do the same thing on on Luxo and self custody your funds right hits on the yeah, kind of the same exactly. pitch there and. Hearing CGen too, it's like, why or, or how are we trying to make this transition between like artists, artists and creatives off of these more Web two systems because there are benefits for them here in in Web three. Uh, but again, as much as you can incentivize, you still need to kind of lower the barrier of entry, right? They're not as Absolutely, incentivized yeah. as as CGens are. So, and I think also ex like help help them understand what what's in it for them like what how they can benefit like what does this mean like go beyond the tech you know what i mean and say and right. like like maybe not even get into the tech you know right. just explain like what this could mean for them in the long run or even in the short run like you know like it's unnecessary yeah i mean this yeah, is like exactly. one of my favorite one of my favorite things that the ethelorian always brings up is like he doesn't know how his iPhone works, right? I don't know how my phone works. I just use it every day because it makes my life easier, right? There's, exactly. there's no need Precisely. to know the, the technicality. It. Yep. So spent a lot of time talking about kind of your thinking around uh, marketing and, and branding when it comes to Luxo. Um, curious on what's in the pipeline. What can the people around Luxo be looking forward to um, and, and what might be coming out over, over the next few months? We are working on the website, a new website. Going to have a totally, going to be totally different uh, than what you see now. And really, it's really a marketing tool. We're focusing, we're using it to focus on conversion to get people to sign up for UPs, get people building, get like make it really clear. No, they'll leave no um, room for interpretation in terms of like what is Luxo, what can I do with Luxo, what what problems to solve, right? So this is a big piece, and and then there will be digital marketing efforts to lead traffic. I mean, a great a new website is amazing. We got to lead traffic there, right? And we are limited by social media algorithms. Like, 
again, we'll need um, community and word of mouth to kind of spread the word. And we can only rely on that so much in terms of new REIT, right? We need new REIT and we need to build even more credibility. I mean, we have so, we have a lot of credibility. We just need to let the world know we're, we're the legit, we're the real deal. The tech is real. It's working. This is all coming, right? And so, um, so driving traffic to the website through some, even some ad spend and, um, some likes because increasing our discoverability um, with search on YouTube. We're going to optimize the YouTube channel. We're producing more content and as much as we can. I mean, we're a small team, you know, so we're doing the, everything we can here. Uh, and we have limited budget, but we are really trying to maximize it and just really trying to put our money where, uh, where we're going to get the most return. And so we need to test and learn. So I'm setting up much more robust um and tracking and analytics and just understanding where that website traffic is coming from, what people are doing when they get to the website. And yeah, let's see, we also have the grants program, which is super important. I think like I was mentioning before, but for building uh, use cases, also building community further and really helping the world see what, um, how Luxo comes to life. Uh, so there will be some marketing efforts for that um, on that side of things as well. I mean, just really getting our new positioning out there with clarity. There'll be a little bit of like a brand identity update as well, which we're working on that will come with the website. Um, yeah, uh, we're working with KOL, uh, both like on the macro, but also I think these micro in micro influencers, KOLs are going to be really important as well. This, there's a whole strategy there to be rolled out. Um, a lot more PR. This is important. Didn't mention that. So now working with a PR agency and I mean, you just got, kind of got to have that piece to show the world how credible we are and um, and to, again, have uh, the earned media piece is just essential, you know, for uh, for getting, mm -hmm. reaching new and um, just establishing what we are out there. So um, kind of happening on all fronts. I'm putting the final touches on a strategy because there are so many moving pieces. It just needs to be really orchestrated and all aligned with with our goals. So the next six months we know we plan for, and we're planning for the next year. In addition to like these, like kind of rolling out this this next six months is like this kind of soft launch uh, of our of our new rebranding. And the next year will be like, and like we want to be positioned right. Like we really want to own this social piece. I think we can, right? Like we're not just a decentralized social network. I mean, not that that's not important. Those are important too. But we are that social piece. We are that human piece of blockchain has been missing so i think we're really positioned to to roll with that and become what what we are let the world know what we are and yeah, build that ecosystem yeah. all of that is fantastic to hear and a uh, a small team um may not be able to do everything in the world but that's where decentralization comes in and you have people like keys and all exactly. these other guys that are out there making content helping you guys out right uh, and once you guys kind of do all this research and, and proper planning and strategy around how to push this branding, again, it can just trickle right down to, to people and companies mm. like us and we can continue pushing the messaging. Well, Natalie, thank you again for coming and sitting down with us. This was an absolute pleasure. It was great to hear about your background, your journey to Luxo and what is coming in the future. And speaking of that, I cannot wait and the rest of us cannot wait to see all this begin playing out, all of your hard work finally hitting the surface. Yeah, it was an honor to be your inaugural uh, extended lightning talk <laughs> interview. And, and I don't thought, yeah, I'm here always to chat. And I, it's always great to chat with me, Sage. So thank you very much. And thanks to Keys Dow for everything you guys are doing. You're awesome. And uh, yeah, here's to more good stuff, building this, building this thing together.